All right. All right guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to replace the cable and tune your SRAM derailleur. So we're just gonna go ahead and start off by taking the shifter off, which is done with a T25. This is the SRAM matchmaker system, so it mounts right into the brake lever. Um, you can also get the clamp, I think they're the same bolt, but it doesn't matter, just fine what fits. Let's go ahead and take that off. And you're gonna go ahead and get a three mil Allen key and undo this bolt. All right, it's worth noting before you take the cover off that you should go ahead and put it into the smallest gear. Make sure it's clicked down and that'll make it a lot easier to get the cable out once you have the cover off. So go ahead and undo the bolt. Set it aside and the cover should pop right off. So you can go ahead and set that somewhere. All right guys, so once you've set the top cap of your shifter aside, go ahead and pull back the housing, just like that, and go ahead and pull, uh, I mean push the cable through, and it should pop out right here. It takes a little little work, and you go ahead and pull that spring up. It should pop right out, just like that. It can be a little finicky. And I forgot to mention, you have to have your cable um, unclamped at the derailleur before you do this so it can pull through and then go ahead and just pull the cable right on through it should come right out and you have a free shifter so we'll go ahead and put a new one in now all right guys little pro tip here before you put your new cable in you can go ahead and take something like tri-flow and just let it seep down into there and this will give you a lot smoother shifts and it'll stay that way for a long time you don't need to go overboard you don't want it running out the other side just let it drain right down into there. That should do it, and now we can put our new cable in. All right, guys, so the cable goes in the exact same way it came out. Just go ahead and feed it right through. Takes a little, little finesse to get in there, but if you got it, just go ahead and pull it all the way through. Super long, so it can be a pain in the ass. So there it is. Make sure it's underneath the spring and make sure it seats up nice against just like that. And I can go ahead and put the cover back on your shifter and attach it back to your bar. All right, so now your shifter's attached. You can go ahead and feed the cable through the outer housing. Just go ahead, it should run right through, especially if you put tri-flow in there. It'll go in nice and smooth, and it should come out the other end. It's a little bit more complicated if you have internal routing, but this bike has a straight shot of cable all the way down to the derailleur, so it's not too bad at all. And that'll go ahead and seat right back into your barrel adjuster. Just like that, and uh, now we can move on to the derailleur. All right, so as you can see, our cable is now through the other side of the housing, so we can go ahead and feed it into the derailleur. And with a SRAM derailleur, there's a little thing called the cage lock. So as you can see, if you push it up and put this little button, the uh, cage is uh, relieved of tension, so it makes it a lot easier to work on, so go ahead and do that. And then just go ahead and feed it right around that little pulley wheel pull it on through, seat your outer housing in there, and then I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a little kind of a cam mechanism, and you just got to feed the cable right through, there's a little hole, make sure you get it through there, it's critical to the function of the derailleur, and go ahead pulling it through, and there we go, now we'll go ahead and uh, get into tuning the derailleur. Alright guys, so before we even begin tuning the derailleur, we want to make sure that it is tight on the hanger because if it's not, it can cause some serious issues. So give that some good torque. I don't know the exact torque spec, but it's pretty tight. So just wrench that down and then we can proceed. All right, guys. So the first adjustment we're going to make here is the limit screw for our smallest cog, which is located on the left back here. So what you want it to do is as you pedal, you want it to be restricted until it's able to jump down to the lowest collar like that, which you can do by turning it counterclockwise. As, as soon as it starts to feel smooth, just go ahead and stop, because if you back it off too much, it'll jump into the frame, and that is the point of this adjustment. Sorry for the loud hub. So now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and pinch our cable, and we'll get to the, uh, the biggest cogs limit screw. All right, so when you're cinching the cable, just feed it up and over. And it's very important, you really do not have to go crazy on this. Just give it a little tension with your hand. You can finish off with the barrel adjuster when you're done. And you don't need to over-tighten it either. 
Just make sure it's nice and snug. And that's that. So now we can get on to the other limit screw. All right, so the concept here is the same. We want it shifting up the block, but we don't want it to jump into the spokes, which as you can see, it's already tuned properly. So it will sit there and it will not jump into the spokes. How you adjust that is this screw right here. Turning it clockwise moves it inboard. So away from the spokes, counterclockwise is outboard. So you want it as close as you can before it jumps in the spoke so it shifts nice and smoothly. All right, so our last physical adjustment on the derailleur is the B-tension screw right here. And what this does is it puts space between the top jockey wheel and the derailleur and the cogs. So you want about that much room, like probably about a chain's width between the biggest cog and the jockey wheel. And all you do for that is shift into the biggest cog. I don't even need to do it because it's pretty self-explanatory. You guys can figure it out. And turning this clockwise will push the jockey wheel away, counterclockwise, towards, and uh, that's it. And you can just fine-tune that. The best feel SRAM does recommend a certain gap, which I think is about 3 to 5 millimeters. But uh, it's kind of it's kind of a feel thing, so go ahead and do that until it feels right. Alright, so now that we have our limits set and we're going to tune the actual shifting, we can go ahead and cut this cable. So you don't have to leave too much room, you don't want it too short, just nice and tidy. So go ahead and snip that and put a little end cover so it doesn't fray and go ahead and clamp that there is specialty tools for this but you can just use a pair of standard pliers and i like to just bend out a little bit so it doesn't rub the derailleur even though it's unfortunately marked up already and keep it as nice as i can so uh now we can get into the shifting all right so how we tune the shifting is through the barrel adjuster so your cable tension should be close enough that you can just fine tune it from here so if your chain is having trouble moving down the cassette into a smaller gear, you're gonna wanna turn this clockwise. And if it's having trouble shifting up into a bigger cog, you're gonna wanna rotate it counterclockwise. This puts more tension on the cable. So it's kinda just a feel thing. I'll show you uh, as I run through the gears. And it's just, it's a feel thing. You'll get it over time and it's not too complicated. And in about a minute or so, you should have totally dialed gears. So I'll show you what that's like. All right, so now we'll just run through the gears and fine tune our cable tension. Looking pretty good so far. Coming down the block nice. Maybe going up a little bit better than it's coming down, so we're gonna turn our barrel adjuster clockwise so we can drop onto those smaller cogs a little bit faster. See how that tries out, how that works out. There we go, pretty dialed shifting right there. Sorry for the loud hub once again. So just like that guys, it's just a feel thing. You just dial it in until it's working how you want it. And I would say it is working pretty perfectly right now. All right guys, that's pretty much it. So this is something that just kind of takes practice and uh, the more you do it, the better you get at it. But it's not very difficult. I hope this was helpful. I know some of the things and how I explained them were a little bit complicated. But uh, if you were to actually try this, it's not too difficult and it makes for a lot better performing bike and it's more enjoyable out on the trails to ride a bike that performs well. So if you like the video guys, please subscribe, like, and comment and uh, I appreciate you guys who do already.